Okay, we have retained an interesting integral. We've got the integral from zero to one of sine x over x dx. And this one's actually pretty similar looking to one I did recently, uh, not too far back. Instead of integrating from zero to one, same integrand, what we did is we integrated this to infinity. But it turns out this is quite a bit different because in those other, I think I did two videos, one of them, because we're going from zero to infinity, we're kind of set up to use Laplace transforms on it because for a Laplace transform, these are the bounds. And the other thing we were able to do is with it going to infinity is we were able to use Feynman's technique and that was set up pretty nicely as well. But because our upper bound is one, I don't think we can use any of the techniques we used previously. Now, the other thing you might be thinking of is why don't we just calculate the antiderivative of this? Why don't we just calculate the indefinite integral of sine x over x dx? The trouble is there's no known value for this in terms of standard functions. So like we just represent the solution of this with this sine function plus C. But this thing isn't going to really help me very much here just because I don't know how to get a numeric value out of this. Because we have a definite integral here, I want to try to get some numeric value or an estimate of this. And this isn't going to really help me here. So what I actually want to use for this is just that we've got sine x here. And for sine x, we know the power series for this or the Maclaurin series. We can write this. Just to kind of get a sense of a few terms, this can be written as x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial. So making use of this right here, we can rewrite our integral. Doing this, what I'll do is I'll kind of factor the 1 over x in front and then write this in terms of a series. So putting this into the series notation, we're going to have this is going to become n equals 0 to infinity. We can handle the alternating sign on this with like a minus one to the n. And then notice this is all the n factorial in the denominator is all odd numbers, the exponents all odd. So what I can do is we can write x as x to the two n plus one, because that's always gonna be odd. And then here we can write the denominator as two n plus one factorial. And then what I can do from here is we can actually just multiply in the one over x and update that right there. And also what I can do is swap the series with the integral so that we're gonna integrate this thing. So we'll bring series to the outside and then multiplying one over x times x to the two n plus one, we can just write this as x to the two n dx. All this other stuff here is gonna be constant with respect to the dx. So we'll bring it out front here and write this as minus one to the n over two n plus one factorial. Going ahead and integrating this thing using power rule, this is gonna become x to the two n plus one, then divide by the power 2n plus 1, and we just need to evaluate this from 0 to 1. And this is pretty nice because when you evaluate this at 0, the whole thing's 0. You plug in a 1, the exponent's not going to matter, the numerator's just going to be 1. So when we rewrite this thing, this part over here is just all going to become 1 over 2n plus 1, and we'll bring in this other stuff, this minus 1 to the n, 2n plus 1 factorial. But then from here, I don't really know how to get an exact value for this thing. We can just kind of write out some terms and we can pretty easily get an estimate. So first, when you plug zero in, we're gonna have zero, here in the numerator, everything's gonna become one. And then here, this is gonna be one factorial times one. So our first term is just gonna be one. Then for the second term, you plug in n equal to one. This is gonna bring a minus sign in front. Then this is gonna become three factorial times three, which is gonna be just 18 here. Then you plug n equals two and you're gonna have a positive sign now. So we'll have one over whatever this is gonna be two. This is gonna be five factorial times five, which is gonna be actually 120 times five or 600. And so what you can see is this is going to zero pretty quick. This is already like 0 0.001 or somewhere in that ballpark. So this is rapidly going off to zero and a lot of these terms aren't gonna matter very much. So what we can do is just use this, I mean, you could use a calculator, we'll not really get a better solution, but you can just estimate this to be around, somewhere around 0 0.946. And that's about as good as I can do for an estimate right now. Of course, you could get much better accuracy with a computer, just doing like a bunch of terms, do 20 terms, and you can get a whole bunch of decimal places. But really, this is about the best I can do with this right now, just using series to get a numeric approximation. Okay, there you have it. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.